Today we look at solving multi-step problems. So when we multiply, or sorry, solve multi-step inequalities, this kind of goes back to what we actually did in this exact chapter, right? This is where we started out with uh, doing the problems. So we go back to what we were doing there. The only difference is now it has an inequality symbol. So first thing that we should do every single time from here on out was what? We want to get rid of parentheses. So in on all of our problems, if there's parentheses, we want to get rid of them. How do we do that? Uh, distributing. Probably going to distribute. Okay, so distributing means that we're going to multiply. So again, don't forget your multiplication rules. Make sure you go all the way through all of the um, parentheses, all the terms. Okay, if you multiply and the signs are the same, my answer is what? Positive. If the signs are different, always a negative. Doesn't matter which one's bigger or smaller. Okay. What's the second thing we should try to do? Isolate the variable. Before that. Well, kind of. You're right. Combine like terms. We want to combine like terms. What does that mean? That means if there's multiple groups of the variable, we got to bring them all together. Okay. So. The key to this one is looking at the problem and seeing where are my variables. Are they on the same side of the equal sign or are they on the opposite side of the equal sign? Well, in this case, inequality sign. But if I have uh, 4x plus 3x is less than 7, when they're on the same side, I do exactly what it says. So I'd have 7x is less than 7. But if they're on opposite sides, if we had uh, 4x is less than 3x plus 7, now I'm bringing my x across the inequality or equal sign, so now I have to do the opposite of what it says. This is a plus, so I'm going to subtract it from both of those sides. That's a really key thing that we have to remember. Okay. From here then, number 3 is basically we're going to solve for the variable. So this is what we talked about at the very beginning of this chapter. And when we're solving for our variable, we want our variable to end up having what? Or what should our variable be? Positive and positive. And positive, right? Okay, so the most important thing that you have to remember is what we did for today. Really, all the steps should be the same thing. We're going to cover up that variable in a multi-step equation and try to get rid of the number first and then isolate that variable. If I multiply or divide by a negative, what do I have to remember to do? Flip, Flip my inequality sign, right? Okay, so let's look at some. Any questions? Plus four is less than or equal to thirty one. So, again, hopefully, nothing real. This would be a basic one. Number one, there are no parentheses. Number two, there's only one variable, so we can skip those two. We just go straight to solving. So, I cover up that x, and how do I get rid of plus four? Subtract four. Subtract four. And? Same number, different signs, they cancel each other out. 3x is less than or equal to? Oh, How do we get x alone? The answer is 9. x is less than or equal to 9. And again, if they ask you to graph it, open or close circle? Closed. Closed, and which way do we shade? To the left. To the left. Why is it closed? Because it says it's equal to, right? So what does that mean again? So again, if this is my graph, right? Here's zero, here's nine. Oops. It could be nine, right? Nine could be a part of my answer, and then this is also a part of my answer. But nine is an answer that could be. Okay? 
Pretty simple, old boy. Uh, 2n plus 5. is greater than 11 minus n. So this would be one of our special ones, right? Number one, we still don't have any uh, parentheses, so we don't have to do the first step. Number two, we're going to combine like terms because we've got an n on each side. When we did this at the beginning of the chapter, we said to take which one towards which one? The smaller one towards the bigger one. Why do we want to do that? So we don't work with negatives, right? Because then, now, if we would have that negative and we'd have to divide, then we'd have to flip-flop our, our inequality symbol and some of you get going really fast and you forget to do that. So, which way are we gonna move our ends? To the left. To the left, right? Minus n means that I'm gonna add an n and if I add it to one side, I gotta add it to the other. If I move my ends to the left, that means I'm moving my numbers to the right. So again, if you want to do this in one step and that doesn't confuse you, whoops, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Now again, if that confuses you doing it in one step, just do it in two steps. Okay, so 2n plus 1n. 3n. 3n. My 5s cancel each other out. 11 minus 5. 6. 6. My n's cancel out. What's n? 2. Greater than 2. Open or close circle? Open. 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 Which way do we shade? Right. To the right. Everybody agree? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, how about this one? So kind of a basic one again. So we go back to uh, kind of a regular one, like our first example, but it's a little different because now instead of showing multiplication, we're going to show division. But again, I'm going to cover up that part with the x. How do I get rid of minus 6? Add, Add 6 to both sides. What's negative 4 plus 6? Negative 2. Two, 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 two. Positive 2, right? And then we're left with negative x over 4 because my 6s cancel each other out. Again, now, this is the ones that we talked about. If there's a negative there, I would go ahead and put it with my number. So, how do I get x all by itself? Um, you will multiply by 4. Yeah. Multiply by what? 4. By what? 4. By what? 2. Negative, negative 4. Oh. <laughs> 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 if, I if I multiply by negative 4 over here, I got to multiply by negative over here, but if I multiply by negative 4, what else has to happen? I gotta switch my inequality sign. Holy moly. Whoever said they could do this in their sleep, you better wake up. It's 8. <laughs> my 4's cancel out, x is what? Negative 8. So, here's a question. Don't say anything out loud. Think about it. Which way are we going to shade? To the left. So, remember, if this confuses you again, take two seconds to rewrite the problem with the variable first. But again, it's pointing towards the x, so it's got to point towards the x on this one right here, too. And so we get x is less than or equal to negative 8. So again, if this confuses you where the variable is on the right-hand side, take the time to rewrite it the other way. Okay with that? All right, how about this one? Are you going to do this one? Greater than 18. So this is the first time that we had parentheses, so that's the first thing we got to do, right? Get rid of the parentheses by distributing. So after we distribute, what do we get? Plus 3, right? Mm -hmm. Two negatives make a positive. And then you should be able to finish the rest. Try it out. See what you get.
What do we get? Negative five. I s <laughs> That's what he told you? Yeah. Are you right? Are you right? What's my symbol? Uh, uh, less than. Less than. Less than, right? K is less than negative 5. Again, why? Because I'm dividing by negative 3 on both sides. And whenever I divide by a negative, I got to flip my inequality sign. So again, show your work so you know what's going on. Uh, open your book real quick. Uh, 357. 357. I want to look at number 30. So this is one of those problems where you got to read and use the right uh, numbers. Okay? On 30, everybody read it. I want you to try to write this equation on your paper, or sorry, inequality. One half of the sum of a number in six is less than 25. What is the number? So we're trying to come up with the inequality first. Yep, then you have to solve it. So the first thing you should do is get this, right? One half the sum of some number in six is less than 25. Now try to solve it. So you got two options in this one, right? When we have a fraction out here, we can get rid of the fraction or we can try to use the fraction. That's your first decision. Which way are you going to try to do it? Do you want to get rid of the fraction or do you want to try to do the problem with the fraction? Get rid of it. Okay, so if we're going to get rid of it, I'm going to put brackets around. I'm going to multiply by the denominator of that fraction. Now here's the key, if we're gonna get rid of the fraction in this problem right here, we can take two times one half, which cancels that out. The x plus six, that two does not go through that parenthesis. Okay, less than what's two times 25? 50. 50, and then we can solve it. Genius. So what's x? Uh, 11. Oh, I'm 44. Ooh. Because I'm subtracting. Where'd you pull 11 from? Me and Ashley both got 11. Yeah. You got to subtract, right? 50 minus 6. I don't know where you got Oh, yeah. I don't know where you got it. one half times. So you could have done the using the one half. If you use the one half, we would have gotten this. I just turned it into one half x plus three is less than twenty-five. You could have done this. Uh, I have to subtract the three. Yeah, minus three yeah, minus that's three. That's exactly what I So these cancel out. I get one half x is less than twenty-two. Yeah, I use twenty-five. Okay. If I divide by a fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. If I multiply on one side, I got to multiply by the other side. X is less than 44 still. Could you go turn one half X to 25? You could have, yes. Yep, totally fine. You should have still got 44. Okay. 
So again, we wanted to show you that one because of using the, the words. All right. Um, turn the page. We're going to look at number 36 now. What does it say up there? 32, 33? No. First, let's look at 34. 34 first. Read it again one more time, please. You said 8x minus, and then in parentheses, x minus 5. Is greater than x plus 17. Okay. So this is kind of a complicated one, right? There's a lot going on in this problem. The first thing that we had that we just erased to us to get rid of what? So we want to get rid of these parentheses. What's the number out in front of the parentheses that we're going to distribute? Eight. Well, not to be one. Hold on. Eight one. What's the number in front of the parentheses? Three. So you use if I use zero, what's going to happen when I multiply? Zero. So we can't see anything out here. So I don't want to use zero. Good idea, though. Is one right? Yeah. 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 Is that the number right in front of the parentheses? No, there is. So there is one. Okay, so Trevor's partially right. If I put a one right here, is it a positive one? It's negative one. So distribute negative one through these parentheses, and what do you get? Negative one x plus five. Everybody agree with that? Okay. Now, now look how many x's we got, right? So let's combine on this side first by doing eight x minus x. So we get seven x plus five is greater than x plus 17. Try the rest by yourself. I can't think of 10 because 7 is going to 12. Why are you going to have to go Because you should have 6x. Oh, it's 8. Okay. 6x. Because I'm going to bring these together. This is smaller than this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, so we're going to subtract the next. Oh, that's easy. I did it in my head, Brady. What'd you get? He didn't really get anything. He got 13 the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you to get to so. Yes, you did. Well, what did you, what did you I can't do it because uh, can take seven. 6 to 7 doesn't go into 13 or I something. Seven doesn't go into 12. So, right here. One smaller than seven, so I'm going to subtract one x from both sides, right? Yeah. So I get six x, that means I'm going to subtract my five from both sides. So we get greater than 12, so x is greater than two. two. Okay. Uh, the next one we want to try is 36. As we're writing down 36 on your piece of paper, distribute the left fraction. So if I distribute the top there, what do I get? Three. Three. Two. Two. <laughs> All over seven oh, is greater than or equal to what's the other fraction? Uh, n plus four plus five. All right. So this one's pretty complicated right here. We basically got a fraction is greater than a fraction. Whenever from here on out we see something like this, you'll see this in uh, proportions and different things like that when you get into algebra and geometry. Whenever you have something like this, this is a proportion. What did we do to solve a proportion? Remember when we had a proportion? We're going to, yeah, say it. Cross multiply, right? So I'm gonna take this diagonal right there and I'm gonna multiply them together. Five parentheses 2n plus 2 is greater than or equal to. Now I'm going to multiply this parentheses or this together. Now here I need to put in parentheses. 
Because I want to take seven times that whole thing. I'm going to put it in my parentheses. So from here on out, anytime that you have two ratios or fractions set equal to each other or in inequality, you're just going to do the cross products and now try to simplify and do this. So work on this right here. Distribute both sides of that. And then combine your like terms. Concentrate. N greater than or equal to six. Anybody else? I didn't get that. Oh, it's those here. Shh. I didn't get twenty-eight. But you got to multiply, right? I got it. All right. Questions here. So a lot of the stuff we've done more than once. Make sure you go through that system. Meaning, get rid of your parentheses, combine like terms, and then solve. Don't forget if we multiply or divide by a negative that we have to flip the fraction. Or sorry, flip the inequality sign. If we divide by a fraction, we have to use the reciprocal. Don't forget here you got two options if you have a fraction in the problem. You can get rid of it, but then you got to just be careful what you multiply. Or you can leave it in there, but then you're going to use fractions or turn them into decimals like Mike did. Okay? Questions? Here's your problems. Tomorrow, we have a quiz. What? What's on the quiz? Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Everything with inequalities. So inequalities, and then adding and subtracting inequalities, multiplying and dividing, and these multi-step ones. 